You may be seated. As Lisa said, our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Acts, the fourth chapter, verses 32 through 35. Hear now the word of the Lord. All the believers were of one heart and mind, and they felt that what they owned was not their own. They shared everything they had. And the apostles gave powerful witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's great favor was among them all. There was no poverty among them, because people who owned land or houses sold them and brought the money to the apostles to give to others in need. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I don't know about you, but I am still on a spiritual high from last Sunday. It was just a most blessed day. The music, the message, the flowers, and a sanctuary full of joyous people just made me feel God's presence in a way that I don't feel it every single Sunday. Um, Easter is my favorite Sunday of the year uh, because we have so much to celebrate and be thankful for. And I just love when Easter comes. On Easter, God showed us that love conquers death, that death doesn't have the last word. It's not final. And that is such good news that um, we can't help but celebrate it. But now we find ourselves a week later uh, wondering how to live as Easter people. Now, by Easter people, I mean people who know that the God of love walked among us as a human being and showed us exactly how all-encompassing and all-inclusive divine love is. Easter people know that God's love is so powerful that it can overcome everything, even death. So what does it mean to live in a world where we know that the love of God is more powerful than anything we can face? What do Easter people do that is so different from everyone else? Well, first, Easter people follow Jesus' admonition to his disciples to love others as I have loved you. Jesus loved everyone. He sought out those who were considered outcasts or unworthy of love. And he put his love into action by welcoming them, healing them, and showing everyone that they were worthy of love and acceptance. As a sign of his love, he even shared his last meal and washed the feet of his betrayer, Judas Iscariot. Thus, as Easter people, we, like Jesus, love others in tangible, meaningful ways. Now, the passage that I just read tells us how the early believers lived out their faith and their love for others and their faith in Jesus after the resurrection how they lived into being Easter people. They were united of one heart and mind, even though they were a diverse and growing group of people. They spent time together in a spirit of love and companionship, and they took care of each other, just like a family does. If they saw a need, they did something about it. No one held back things for themselves that someone else needed, that, that was lacking. And so what happened was those early believers put other people's needs ahead of their wants. 
They used their resources for the common good. This was their version of church. Now, church back then didn't mean a dedicated building like this beautiful sanctuary. It usually meant people gathering together in somebody's home or even out by a river if that's the only place they could find. But those early believers enacted, they lived into being the body of Christ. The thing that set them apart from other groups was that they lived in a community that cared for each other in tangible ways. They were living their faith by emulating Christ, and the people around them noticed. Friends, the presence of God in us and the way that presence manifests itself in love, compassion, and service is what sets us apart uh, as the church today from just other groups where like-minded people get together, so-called affinity groups or clubs. It's not about just what we believe. We have to put our beliefs into practice. We have to live them. Now, we can't do that on our own. We are, by nature, self-focused. We want what's best for us. But with God's help, we are able to live in ways and do things that we might have otherwise thought impossible. Now, you, want, you might wonder how knowing the risen Christ could get people to such a place where they didn't focus on their, their own interests, but on the needs of others. And for that information, we can turn over to the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter. In verses 19 through 23, John writes, that evening on the first day of the week, and this first day of the week happened to be Easter Sunday, the Sunday that Jesus rose from the dead. The disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he held out his hands for them to see, and he showed them his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. He spoke to them again and said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you refuse to forgive them, they are unforgiven. Thus ends this reading of God's word. So these verses are John's version of Pentecost. In John's account, Jesus gives the disciples the Holy Spirit by breathing on them. It is this spirit, God living within them, that empowers them to live differently, to live a God-honoring life, and to love God and others the way God wants them to and the way that Jesus actually did. So the Holy Spirit living in us, in all believers, but even including us sitting right here, enables us to do things that we might think are impossible. So Easter people are able to love like Jesus and be generous through the power of the Holy Spirit because they know that everything they have is a gift from God. Understanding that everything we have, everything that we are, is ultimately coming from God, lets us be freer with our possessions. Since they are a gift, we don't need to hold on to them. We can be generous and share because we know that God has shared with us. We will take our blessings and use them to bless others. 
So the first characteristic of Easter people is that they love others the way that they are loved and the way that Christ loved. And they put that love into action to ensure that all people are taken care of. But there's more to Easter people. Another characteristic of Easter people is that they are people of hope. Even in the darkest times, they have hope because they know that God can bring resurrection and life out of death and destruction. Friends, we know that God can bring life out of death. That's the lesson of Easter that we celebrated last week. But if God can do that, then God can bring healing and wholeness out of the chaos and destruction that is out there in this world and in our lives. We can trust that God doesn't want things to remain messed up like they are. When we understand that God uses people to accomplish God's work in this world, we will have divinely infused vision where we can look around and see how God is acting in the world around us. Because we have hope in God's ability to create a better world, we are willing to work to make things the way God wants them to be. God gives us the power through the Holy Spirit to work for equity and justice, to show love to everybody, and to be agents of healing and wholeness in this broken world. Easter people see the possibilities for this life and then live into those possibilities to try to make them happen. Easter people aren't constrained by harsh reality because they can see God's vision for the world. Now there have been many people throughout the ages that can see God's vision for the world and then are willing to do something to make that vision come true. The Reverend, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was one of those people. He envisioned a new way to live where black people and white people were seen as equals and treated that way under the law. He had a dream and he worked to make that dream a reality. And through his efforts and efforts of countless others, the United States Congress passed the Civil Rights Act in 1964 that banned segregation on the grounds of race, religion, or national origin at all places of public accommodation. He was an Easter person who worked to make God's vision for this world come true. So Easter people love like Jesus and put that love into action. And they also have hope that God is with them in this world and that it can be better. The world can be better, more just, loving, and equitable. They are willing to be used by God to see this hope realized. Easter people not only seek to bring God's kingdom here to earth, however, but they also understand that this life is not all there is. They know that death is not the end because Jesus promised that something better awaits. Jesus told his disciples that we will share in the resurrection and spend eternity with our Lord. And this hope of eternal life gives us something to look forward to even in the worst of times. While we continue to work, to work to make this life better, we can't always do that. There is cancer. There are autoimmune issues and neurological problems and other things like that that don't, excuse me, don't currently have a cure. But while God is using people to work for cures for those things, they haven't been found yet. 
However, even when faced with insurmountable difficulties like this, we can still trust God and have hope for the future, a future that will be free from those ailments. Easter people trust that God is with them in their troubles and that God will bring them out of those troubles, be it here on earth or in heaven. My friends, because the Holy Spirit is with us, we can all be Easter people. We can love others passionately and generously like Jesus did. We can be filled with hope based on our belief in the supremacy of divine love. We can let that hope and God's spirit fuel us to work for a better world. And we can trust that God is with us and will see us through every single difficulty in life that we face. And that when this earthly life is done, we will go on to something far better. May we all be Easter people. Amen.